But yet, you know, they totally destroyed me doing that. But I still, they still think I owed them 220 k right? But, you know, they haven't even come after that 220 k Not one letter. Nothing. Because the order said that they were going to send notice to this guy in um, in the IRS uh, in D.C. that he's going to come after me for the rest of the money. Well, no letters. And what is this? End of July, right? So maybe the 709s back in February stopped all of that for, for, for now. Well, I hope it's forever, but for now it stopped it, right? Anyway, <clears throat> just want everybody to know what's going on. Well, thanks, Ron, and, and I I understand, and in fact, I have, just to let everyone know, just a quick follow-up on my, my own issue. I know it's been enormously frustrating, anyone dealing with with a tax office, it's been enormously frustrating. One, one is the machine, the machine of tax is actually built on the same machine as insurance, and I think it's, it's, it's instructive to, to look at it. In America now, apparently, and Ron, you might know this figure better than I, but apparently in America now, there is something like 20 million people who are in some state of, from a tax perspective, some state of default in the, uh, in the putting through of their tax returns. So it's a huge, huge number. And what it seems that the systems are doing now is they're just automating. So you literally, they will, they will apologize or they won't apologize, they won't reply. What's happening is you've got a handful of people relative to the number of, of complaints or non-compliance, and then you've got these huge automated systems that are firing off letters to all different places, and the system has become the god of automation. Mm. So um, that is part of it. Don't think that there's a, an army of people there sitting there crafting evil letters back to you. I think the system has become more automated than it ever has. Yep. What, right? Yeah. Every everything is, comes out of a computer. Nobody signs anything. That's right. That's why they're not signing. They're not signing it because they think. Uh, I mean, they'd like us to think they're not signing it because they're not holding themselves accountable. But um, the the real reason, the the this lazy reason, is that they are um, they are it, the thing is automated. And just to let everyone know, I mean, I received for Eucadia Books, which was the, the business that I established in order to make a living in order to produce Eucadia. And this is the business that I've said to everyone is being wound down as part of the communities being established. It's not a business that will stay there forever. It's not there to do that. It's there to do a job and be wound down. But I received a, a letter from the Australian tax where they were making a whole lot of presumptions. And just to let folks know, I sent back a notice, a rejection notice on the back of their presumed warning, and I included a schedule of fees. So I'm going to ask Gerald at some point that we'll put them up on the U of U so people can see uh, what was sent. Because you can, if you're being part of this, everything with me is transparent. So I want to let people know that. And for better or for worse, uh, I join all of you who are in the trenches because the god of automation, I'm sure, will produce more letters my way. But this only went out the last few days. All right, Ron. Okay. Thank you, and thanks for everything you're doing on the material. Hey, Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Ron. All right. Very good, Frank. Um, Back to the passport information, you know, we were, we were discussing the uh, non-resident alien. Uh, there's a question here about getting any more info uh, from those that have done passport, uh, new, either new passport applications or have corrected their existing ones. Is there a way of getting that information from, at least from those that you know, and there's a few of us that might be able to get it from uh, others that we might know. Absolutely. Uh, look, I, I, I think there. I'm in the same boat. I mean, that's why I mentioned that that I have, for the first time, a, an issue that's arrived from tax in Australia. 
we all, we all are dealing with issues. So I think it is incredibly important that there is uh, that information available. And what I'd like to say is this. I can't commit to say it'll be tomorrow or the next day, but as a matter of priority, we will ensure that a, there is a section on passports and what we know in an informal way. I'm going to ask Gerald on the University of Eucadia to set up a, an area on passports so that we can start to collect people's knowledge and, and uh, whether it be myself or, you know, Terry, you've got first-hand, other people have first-hand experience where we can actually share that information ahead of it becoming more formal. Uh, and if people have examples, they can load them up. So I think the, the first off is let's get a little forum topic up there on passports and get material that we know has worked up there ASAP. So let me talk to Gerald and see if they can get up there straight away. All right? Very good. Thank you, Frank. Our next question from the chat. We sent our EDPs overseas, which is the land of uh, where they were born. Shouldn't we also notify the parasites here in Australia so we can make those changes? Yes. Is that necessary? Yeah. Now, the part of the up update, and, I, and I'm, I've deliberately said that I don't want to be directly involved in the update because I think it's important. There's a lot of people, in fact, all the people who come on and have experience, have, have terrific experience. We've got people from all over the world that have an ability to contribute. I think it's really important that, that knowledge is allowed to, to view this as an open source without interference from me. So the process may take a little bit longer. And in that process, how to uh, integrate the ecclesiastical deeds as part of perfecting constructive notice in the place that you're living, let alone the place you were born, needs to be updated. So the answer is absolutely yes, you should give constructive notice, but how that should be done in, in the future with what we now know, I leave that up to those that will be working on that material and preparing it for all of us. So I can't give an answer as to when it will happen or how it will look, but that's something that will be worked on over the next days and the next couple of weeks, definitely. All right. Thank you, Frank. All right. Just as a reminder to those of you that have a question for Frank on the chat, if you will type question in all of the case and then type in your question after um, after that in proper case that helps us spot uh, the uh, questions that you have. Uh, looks like there's a question regarding the mandamus docs. Uh, where are the mandamus docs to the three Ps? Are they up yet? Um, the mandamus docs um, have not gone. Uh, we, we had the, I think they're referring to the Great Ritz. I'm assuming that's, that's what they're talking about. Yeah, the Great Ritz. Mm -hmm. the, the Great Ritz have not um, been per perfected uh, because we have had, every time we go in deep diving in terms of material on their system and go through the layers, we've encountered different elements. So I'm, I'm pleased to say that the knowledge now in terms of great writs and perfecting of constructive notice is going to be a uh, left-right killer blow into their system done properly. But the writs themselves and the language themselves, uh, it is less the language, it's more about uh, what role you're asserting and it is also very much about how you give record, so how you put on the public record in their system and how you give notice and perfect. And now, uh, I know that there are people in prison and there are people who have asked this for me months ago They've got people in people who have their, their wife or husband in prison. I know that there are people who uh, are desperate to see that the great writs, particularly with those elements, come back up. All I can say is, as we discussed tonight, even getting on top of the presumptions, even on understanding the role of what is the general guardian, is material that is emerging on a daily basis. So I, I, I'm. In one sense, I'm pleased that we didn't embark on a model 
of writs before this information, but with the information that we've got, I still see the writs as a key priority. But I have to allow people who are working together, the likes of Matt and Ron and uh, Greg and, and all, all of you who are working in different ways, uh, that, that that combined intellectual power approaches this and not directly from me. Um, part of me getting out of where I am at the end of the year is that I am not the sole source of knowledge. My role needs to change and in that even the preparing these remedies is an example that we've got to work together. So I, I ask also on the U of U as a, as a way of keeping people abreast, let's see that we've got something up on U of U to keep abreast of what's going on and track of who's who. So at least people know the status of this stuff, what's going on. All righty. Okay. All right. Thank you, Frank. Uh, there's a question here. I'm not sure that it's complete. So, Dake7019, if you have a, anything else to add to your question you typed in here regarding paying tax. All right. Question starts out, Frank, if you want to just expand on this. Paying tax and obtaining a license makes us criminals through the international law and trading with the enemy. It's hard to comprehend. Do you have anything else to... Uh, possibly add to that as far as correcting those issues. Yeah, did they say it's, it's hard to comprehend or... or, yes. or, or Yeah, it is hard to comprehend. It's hard to comprehend that people we trust could be our family, could be our parents, are people that knowingly or tacitly tagged along to a system that treated its own people as enemies. My great-grandfather in Australia was the Attorney General of Australia. He was one of the founding fathers of uh, the Constitution in Australia. My grandfather was, was at his, when he was alive, was regarded as, as one of the leading barristers and members of the private bar guild in Australia. And so I've been surrounded by these people growing up and I've been surrounded by uncles and great uncles and all sorts of people in the system. And, and it, it, it blows me away when I see the connection between the Geneva Convention uh, and, and uh, the uh, Hague Convention and the private laws, the trading with the enemy and how this whole system was created through the, the puppeteering of our friends in Venice and Magyar Kazarian Sabatain parasites, banking families, to a system of plantations. It beggars belief. But it is there. And the history of it is there and the evolution of it is there. But, you know, their, their, their strongest weapon for deniability has been to dumb people down. They created a, a philosophy. And again, to understand why things are the way they are, they invented a system of philosophy for the bar guild in the 20th century to deliberately dumb down the bar guild. When you talk to a lawyer, you talk to a judge, you talk to a magistrate, these aren't evil people. They don't go to court with horns poking out, poking out of their heads. These people, you know, outside of their time are, in many cases, members of, of, of local community associations. They are, in many cases, genuinely good people. They just happen to be the ones that maintain an evil system. But to dumb it down, they created this thing of, of legal realism, which effectively said that the law uh, isn't based anymore about positive law or natural law. The law is simply the law of prob probability, the law of presumption, the law of uh, particulars and the case at, at, at hand. And so it, it, it gave excuse for what they do. As to the more detail that they want to know about international law and how the system goes about it, the remedy is what we spoke about. The remedy is bringing it to the light. The remedy is rebutting the presumptions. The enemy, uh, the answer to it is doing what we're doing with ecclesiastical deed poll. But as far as more information is concerned, 
and it's hard to believe. And is there any way 